Hello, I'm Lebo Khansi Jake, standing in for Spumela Lezondi. Welcome to Network. Tonight on the show, we visit South Korea to learn more about the future of the Internet of Things with Spumela Lezondi. We also look at the online spaces that have helped an African clothing brand go international. Our studio discussion today is on the effectiveness of hashtags or the lack thereof with Conrad David from Hashtag South Africa. Hello Conrad, how are you? I'm good in yourself. Exactly how effective are hashtags? Well, they are quite effective depending on the social media platforms you are engaging on, but it's very effective if you want to get a good message across. All right, thank you. We will be unpacking that later on the show. Please do follow us on at SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We are news network at sabc.co.za on email. Now, let's start with our social media and technology news. The term the Internet of Things has been a buzzword in the tech space. Some say it's even going to lead us to connected homes where you would be able to switch on your lights even if you're not there. But how soon will this become a norm? Network Spumila Lizondi is in South Korea, a country that makes a lot of this new technology. He has been trying to find out. Homes are becoming more connected with machines talking to each other. That's the Internet of Things coming into play. Now, for example, this mirror is not just a mirror. With just a click of a button, you will see that it starts coming on and it becomes a television set that one can watch from the bathroom. When one thinks about fridges, innovation really comes to mind as they are just the square boxes that store food. But we're finding out that it's not quite that like this InstaView fridge from LG. And the fridge over there, it's really, it's really new and tech, with um, very good technology because as you can see, the glass panels on the door. And if you knock it twice, it turns transparent so that you can see inside. And the, and the story behind this is that um, people, when they, when they use the fridge, you know how there are people they open the door up to maybe 60 times a day if, at maximum but without taking out anything so we we um, discovered that habit of people and then we thought why don't we just um, make it simpler for them to check what's inside without opening the door actually there is a part on the bottom side of the fridge where there, where there is a laser beam coming comes out and if you put your feet on top of it then the door opens automatically. There are models which have internal cameras attached to it so that's we call it panoramic view so it's connected to the application so that if you look at if you turn on the application and you'll see uh, what's inside with a panoramic view so that you can get more eggs, milks if it's run out. So it's very convenient. The Internet of Things connects many parts of the home. What you can do with them remotely is anything you can do with them in person often. So you can start them or stop them, set up timed responses and this sort of thing. But Internet of Things also covers small sensors. So you can do like home security, motion detectors, uh, IP cameras, um, anything really that can gather some sort of information and uh, share it via an internet connection or I guess that could be controlled via an internet connection. But there are challenges in South Africa's connectivity that might make this hard. Well, look, if you look at the South African market, uh, the South African market are known to be late adopters so in terms of technology that you're getting from IOT um, it's going to be quite a challenge for all South Africans to adopt this technology by the, the, the given time frame but what I can say is also that data at the moment is very expensive and of course you know IOT is running on a lot of data if you want to control things that are going on in your home um, from outside of your home that's going to consume a lot of data and as we know it's an ongoing issue with the data most fall uh, campaign that's been going on um, recently we did hear that the Vodacom CEO did say that data prices may fall but only time will tell. Tech companies say they won't wait for South Africa to get it right. I think South Africa also is a developing country right so also annual growth of economy and also technology also, even in the future, it will be more. So, with that kind of development, South Africa customer, people, they, they can uh, enjoy this kind of LG's IoT concept and uh, 
value of you know, technology. For now, we can imagine a future where all machines in our home will talk to each other and make life that much easier. Google has celebrated Africa Day by teaching digital skills to young people in Soweto. The internet giant held two workshops, one fo focused on assisting job seekers and the other concentrated on small business owners. I've actually learned a lot, especially I'm from the small enterprise um, conference. Um, it actually showed me uh, that there's so much that you can do, which is for free, from Google. Like having your SEO, having your, um, your company there, you know, so yeah, it was very informational for me. Campaigns like this help us to market ourselves locally. Those are some of the attendees of the digital workshop organized by Google in Mdeni Library in Soweto. They were given digital skills in workshops focusing on job seeking and growing small businesses. Google say they have formed partnerships to ensure that these workshops continue beyond Africa Day. At Google we try not to, we do our best not to operate in a vacuum. So we are partnering today with an institution called MOVE, Massive Open Online Universities. And primarily what they are doing is they're established in the community, so they're well established within the Soweto community. But more importantly, they partner to use uh, public spaces like we're right now in the MDNA library. And what we are hoping for is, yes, we can come in with the specific skill sets or trainings that we have, but more importantly, because they are in the community, we can continue to work through them to sustain the momentum. Most student Premo Kugara says he has learned a lot from the workshop. I'm here to attend the Google Ad event, so it is for small businesses of which um, I specialize specifically in web design. So they're helping us to get our online presence, every app that you need in order for you to be able to go online, for you to be able to market your things, for you to be able to get more customers to come in. The workshop were facilitated by Googlers from across the continent, led by South Africans. Our particular focus with the Accelerate with Google, I'm sure my colleagues will speak to it, is to go after communities that have otherwise not been included. Online spaces have helped an African clothing brand go international. American superstar Beyonce Knowles found Kisua on social media. Her team made contact and that was the continuation of considerable success for the fashion label. We paid them a visit in their Johannesburg offices. They told us how the internet has helped them dress the singer, the head of the World Economic Forum on Africa and others. A lot of African fashion in people's minds is for special occasions, it's for when you have a wedding or when there's a new child that's been born and there's some sort of celebration. And we're saying, actually, contemporary African fashion is something that you can wear every day. Um, and the Kiswa woman is that stylish woman who wants to wear something modern, but at the same time, say something about her heritage and say something about Africa and where she's from. It was actually our website. Now, the, the day that we went live was the 10th of October um, 2013. And that was when we actually went live and started trading. And it was, uh, you know, it was obviously a, a happy moment um, that we were able to finally go live. And it also so happened to be my, my mother's birthday. Social media has played a huge role. And that's the beauty of the internet. The internet is actually my favorite fashion invention of all time. Because what the internet allows you to do um, as a new fashion designer is to be able to get to the world stage almost immediately. Before the internet, it would take you 10, 15, 20 years before people outside of your country, outside of your continent would even begin to hear about you. But these days with Instagram and social media, Anybody anywhere in the world can see what we're doing. And that's actually how we got to dress Beyonce. Her stylist found us on Instagram and then reached out to us. And the rest is history. I used to be in venture capital. So I work very closely with a lot of online businesses. So I understood the power of the internet. And what we did was we actually started the business online first and then subsequently started opening retail stores because we knew that having that online presence would create awareness and generate demand. We look to the past, we look at traditional techniques, traditional fabrics, uh, we look at um, references, it could be Ndebele wall paintings from 
South Africa, it could be kente cloth from, from Ghana, it could be the himba dress from Namibia. And we take elements out of this and we make them contemporary. We create products that the modern woman can wear in her everyday life. A Japanese interactive art exhibition took place in China and Hollywood celebrities went on Twitter to express their feelings on the Manchester bombing that happened during singer Ariana Grande's concert. These are some of the stories that may take headlines in the last week. Japanese art collective Team Lab unveiled their first exhibition in China this weekend, bringing colorful interactive art installations to Beijing. Visitors are able to explore a digital garden of floating flowers and forest animals as well as a crystal universe of interactive light sculptures where they can use their smartphones to control the lights around them. This time we designed the exhibition in order to provide an experience for the audience, letting them immerse themselves in the forest of digital flowers, get lost in it, find the boundary between themselves and where the world disappears to be linked to the world and also to give the audience a chance to find a brand new self. There is also a sketch town or digital playground where children can see their drawings transformed into 3D animations on a screen around them. When I arrived at this exhibition, I thought it would be like a large forest. I didn't know it was a place with so much fun. The current exhibition titled Living Digital Forest and Future Park will run until October 10 in Beijing. In July, they will also open an exhibition in Shijin. The Tokyo-based company says their work hopes to blend art, science and technology in an interactive way. Still at one of the most innovative countries, China has applied its Beidou satellite navigation system in the development of self-driving vehicles as the high precision time and space information services penetrating into all trades and services. The vehicle has so far gone through more than 10,000 kilometers of test run. The results show that the driving on an express highway is similar to the level driven by a driver. With the improvement of the Beidou technology, its navigation technology is developing towards intelligence, high precision and low cost. It will be widely applied in the Internet of Things, smart traffic logistics, goods flow and smart cities. Moving on to the US of A. Many tweets continue to flood following the tragedy that took place in Manchester. Celebrities including singers Katy Perry, Harry Styles and actor Dwayne Johnson tweeted words of solidarity following a bombing at the Ariana Grande concert where at least 22 people were killed. After the break, we discuss the effectiveness of hashtags with Conrad David from Hashtag South Africa. Stay tuned. The meteorite hit the Earth two million years ago, creating an enormous impact of crater, about 10 kilometers in diameter near Federford in the Free State. A hundred kilometers southwest of Johannesburg, now known as the Federford Dome, a South African World Heritage Site. The meteorite is said to have been larger than Table Mountain and caused a thousand megaton blast of energy. The impact would have heated about 70 cubic kilometers of rock and have increased the Earth's oxygen levels to a degree that made the development of multicellular life possible. The world has about 130 crater structures of possible impact origin. The Fredford Dome is the largest in the world, followed by Southbury Crater in Canada and the Chicloop Crater in Mexico. Welcome back. We took to the streets asking South Africans whether or not hashtags such as men are trash convey the intended messages. Here's what they had to say. Statements like men are trash attract attention. 
and it's doing a whole lot more than the government and everyone else is doing. I think it's a good way to start advocating for women who are being attacked by men by using that hashtag. It's a way to start from then onwards. Maybe people will come up with better strategies to be able to protect women against men who um, violate them, be it sexual harassment or anything of that sort. Firstly, um, by saying men are trash, I think you are deviating from the real issue. But man, it's not every man is trash. It's like saying my father is trash, and of which I know my father is a is a right man. The how people took it made it something that it wasn't. But the intention behind it was to bring about awareness to women abuse and such. The hashtag of men are trash, I must say though, it's really um, an incorrect generalization because not all men are trash, you know. Here to discuss the effectiveness of hashtags or the lack thereof with us is Conrad David from Hashtag South Africa. Hello and welcome to Network. Thanks for having me. Great. Now, Conrad, we just saw that clip. Mm. Um, I mean, what is your feelings? I mean, looking at some of those opinions by the people. Well, firstly, it's, I guess the movement is quite effective for us to ha actually be talking about it on television. But... I guess the frame of, of words used is not really that great. I think us as South Africans, we, we jump on things that are negative too quickly, but when it's something of positive nature, we tend not to support. Uh, but I truly feel that women are taking a stand, as well as other cultural things that take place in South Africa. A lot more voices are being heard through social media, and I think it's something not to be silenced about. Mm. So now one person said that it actually deviates from the actual issue. Is mm. that what you think is wrong? Exactly. The most important thing, whenever we run campaigns or when we coach businesses, we advise them, stick to the core message and objectives. This is the key mm -hmm. thing. We're talking about women are being treated bad. Focus on it. Now, I just recently did a checkup on Men Are Trash today, and now there are businesses trying to sell tasers and those type of things for women. So a lot of people are trying to leverage it uh, for their benefits. I still feel that organizations should look at making use of this hashtag, but try and transfer it to something like, um, you know, uh, women are first or something changed to something different. Oh, so you move like a positive aspect Exactly. Of it. I believe the world is looking at South Africa and us as South Africans, we've inherited a new democracy. So it's our choice and our stand to make it a positive future. So by the messages we share, we need to give a better sentiment out there. Okay, I mean, let's just discuss the, 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 the lifespan of these hashtags. I yes. mean, do you think they just, they have, uh, they get hyped up, mm -hmm. a momentous hype, and then later on only to die down in the near future? Wh what do you think about that? Well, when it comes to digital, this information will be there for as long as the internet is around, till the point where the internet saved on one USB and left on Mars by 2030. So, Hashtags start, uh, we always advise clients we have a pre, during and post strategy. Pre is the build up to it, the actual content shared and then follow ups. Uh, you can actually go back and search on hashtags to see what the communication is like on Instagram, on Twitter as now as well as on Facebook. Okay, so I, I like the point that you made that businesses actually took over and are now selling tasers. Exactly. But do you, do you find that people are more um, active online as opposed to in real life and going out and actually Yeah, we like to work? call them keyboard ninjas. <laughs> so they have a lot to say when it comes to keyboard, but when you want to get people out there. But I think that's where activists can really make a strong approach to tell people, right, we've got something trending. Let's meet at our community hall at 7 p.m. tonight. Let's take an actual effect. And I think... A lot of people need to find solutions for action rather than just add to the conversation. Mm. So, but then now, what are some of the pointers you can give people? How do we continue the, the conversation beyond social media or online? Well, it's about, first of all, if something trends online, the most important factor is we need to have an offline activation. So, we're having uh, this men are trash. Great, so we get people together, we get the ministry if need to be, or we start creating community-based initiatives. Or sitting down at your dinner table uh, after the show and talking to your kids, now son, this is not the way to treat a woman. Now daughter, this is not the way to treat your man. It has to start at homes. The thing about the internet is it creates conversations all around the world. So it's what we do with that information that matters. You know, there was another hashtag, um, hashtag not in my name, uh -huh. and I know celebrities went out, but there wasn't a lot of traction as opposed to, you know, online, Yes, obviously. So, I mean, how do people, the positive stuff that you're talking about mm -hmm. right now, that instead of doing a hashtag men are trash, we should do women are awesome or hashtag women are awesome. How do we 
sort of because those ones never seem to gain the numbers mm -hmm. so how do we make sure that they actually gain traction themselves and have a life of their own well a lot of a lot of the follow-up things from having training things is apps being developed or websites so you can create a website for a call center scene like uh, um, so what we do, we would track and have all the information show in the hashtag. So maybe the police service or maybe some sort of organization, you can plug into the hashtag and find, okay, this is what's relevant. Then you can go and reach out to that individual. Hey, we saw your message. Can we help you? Do you need counseling? You know, take that initiative. The information's out there. People are doing for cry for help. Back in 2011, when I did a keynote about social media, someone tweeted that they were getting raped and no one replied to it. So now we live in a society where we have people out there that are listening to the voices. Uh, we see the police services online doing a lot of things. We see a lot of activists, uh, political parties. So I guess there's also a stance for you to have an opportunity for business as well, like people are selling products. It's about how can I make the most of what I can do and contribute to the society rather than complain to the society. Okay. So now here's the, I mean, the all in all question that I had yeah. initially. Do you think, according to you, that hashtags are effective? Yeah, well, you know, I call my company Hashtag South Africa because I, I always advise people from the coaching and training that we do. Uh, just like in school, we said the verb is the doing word. The hashtag is the action word. Every word that you write and add a hashtag to the beginning of it, that's a community of conversation that's going on. There's millions, hundreds of thousands, down to maybe just 20 people. It allows you to engage with those pockets of people in communication. Uh, like we always advocated, hashtag South Africa should always be the number one trending hashtag. Uh, so people in the world can be like, okay, these are products and services, this is what's going on, and not just negative content. And we've seen a lot of change happen over the years. Very positive change. Okay. That was such an awesome information for me, Conrad. Thank you so much for coming to our show. Awesome. Yeah, and then, you know, just one last thing. Mm -hmm. uh, South Africa 2030, we have 13 years to go. We have the internet. We've seen businesses prosper. Make use of these resources. And if you can't find clients and products to sell locally, market yourself to a global community. Okay, you heard it from Conrad, from Conrad from Hashtag South Africa. Now we caught up with Uzalo actress Nompi Loma Pumulo and she told us what her favorite piece of technology is. I'm a Hi guys, some of you know me from Uzalo, I mean most of you know me from Uzalo as Yeah, I'm here to tell you that my favorite gadget is a Huawei P9, can't tell me anything. support the calls made by Blayton Zimande and Soli Mapaila. It is not a call by Soli, by Comrade Soli Mapaila and the Comrade Blayton Zimande. It is, the, it is the position of the party. Yes. And the position of the party, we support it unambiguously. Why? The theory of the revolution, in simple terms, was that revolutionary forces are going to take charge of the state. And having taken charge of the state, they are going to transform the state to eventually transform society. Join me in Port Sedu live every Monday to Thursday at 17.30. The Pan-African Parliament as a legislative body could do, go a long way in continuing to promote um, women's rights in uh, all African member states. Moon will be elected president. A decisive win by him will provide much needed stability in South Korea. The Deputy President and the SADC Oversight Committee have been mandated to convene a multi-stakeholder national dialogue before election. Five teams are trapped in the relegation mud. These include Bloemfontein Celtic, 12 on the lock, followed by Chippa United, Free State Stars and Baroka, who are second from the bottom, as well as Highlands Park, who have won only four matches. We're on point with breaking stories, detailed economy and sport. Tune in to Midday Report every Monday to Friday from 12 p.m.
Now welcome back. Phone Finder is a website that helps with finding suitable phone contracts. Lance Scrum tells us how this online tool works. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a website um, which lists every single cell phone contract in South Africa across all the networks and across as many service providers as we can get our hands on. What I mean by that is that you'll have your your Cell C, your MTN, your Telcom, your Vodacom, but then we'll also put on other uh, service providers such as, um, say, Smart Mobile, which caters towards a different target market. they not a network themselves, but they will offer a service um, to customers who need a, a cell phone contract. Um, what we do then is we list all of those deals. So currently there's, say, about 8,000 or 10,000 unique cell phone contracts on PhoneFinder, and then we just allow people to easily navigate the website to find a contract that best suits their, their, their needs and their budget. Um, fill in a form and we connect you directly with that network or service provider. You, you select the drop down menu, takes you to those phones. Or you can filter it even further by price or by minutes, data, SMS. And you'll find the deal that, you, that suits you the best. Click call me, fill in your details, click submit and Hopefully within five minutes, one of the networks will call you. This week we asked how often do you purchase goods from online stores and 54% of you said never, 33% answered. Now that's all we have for you this week. Pumela Lazondi will be back with you next week. Remember to catch us on at SABC Network on all social media platforms. We leave you with visuals of the living digital forest and future park that was held in China. From me and the rest of the network team, good night.